party people welcome back thank you for joining us again for a freddie mercury kill download yay guess what she's here in person i'm gonna cry well i'm here but she's actually at my place not at her place that's <laughs> why i road tripped so I have not had a sneaky peek. I've had a full kiln peek. So Chase hasn't had a sneaky peek. I've put a tablecloth over so she has not seen one piece. She's lying on the lounge as a lady of leisure <laughs> um, watching. So I, I um, did this whole surprise for her with her son, Tyler. So we are in Tracy's house at the moment. So, oh my goodness, I'm so excited that she's back. I actually feel emotional yeah, that she's actually she made me here. cry earlier when she told me what the surprise was. I burst into tears. Yeah, I had to tell her because I'm bringing in tables and tubs and everything. So um, exciting. Very exciting. But I haven't told her that this kiln I intentionally packed with pieces that she made me throw. So, yeah, most of this. Um, so one day she was feeling really down, had cabin fever. So I video rang her and I said, right, I'm just going to show you the size of the ball of the clay and you're going to tell me what to throw. And as I throw, you're going to tell me how to alter the rim. You're going to tell me whatever. So a few of them are in here. So it's going to be quite quick. There's not many pieces at all because they're quite big pieces. So we will get through it quickly. Um, first of all, oh, I had some thank yous. Because my last kiln unload was one o'clock in the morning, I forgot to do my thank yous. So uh, for my coffees, I had to thank Jeanette Sherritt. She bought me a coffee and Michelle Rives bought me three coffees. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It helps me and Trace so much. It gets us all, um, you know, glazes and products. I put it back into Mad Magic. Um, and uh, Audrey at Audrey Lynn Studios. I have been binge watching every single one of her kiln unloads. I just love them. She's got similar taste to me. But the funny thing was, you all know I've got my pink sister uh, who, oh, I miss her so much. She hasn't done any kiln unloads for a while. But now I have my drippy sister because Audrey loves drips. And she's struggling the same as I do because her kiln's a bit cooler like mine. I mean, it's still five, five and a half, but she struggles to get the drips and she loves the drips too. So yay, now I've got my drippy sister. So let's get into it. So I was going to arrange it to worst to best because I could, but I didn't because um, then Trace would have seen. So actually he's still in the order pretty much of how it came out of the kiln in a way. So the worst piece is going to be the last piece, unfortunately. But I'm really happy I didn't get any stuck on cookies, nothing. One, I went absolutely nuts with the glazing on it because um, I've been watching Amanda at Red Eft, um, Red Eft Designs, I think it is. And she, like I thought I went crazy with glaze. Well, she does beautiful layering and beautiful, like a lot of different glazes and stuff. So I thought, right, I'm going to push it. So one piece in particular I thought was going to run everywhere and it didn't. So yes, I'm really excited. So I've got to try and carefully pick up the tablecloth so Chase can't see. So I've got to go in and out. Yes, so, I don't even get the sneaky peeks of when she opens the lid. I can't see into it. She didn't even know I put kiln on this time. Normally I message her, kiln's on, but no, she didn't even know that this no, time. I she didn't. had no clue. Didn't tell her when bisque went on or anything. So the very first piece is going to be my piece of the kiln, which I thought before, I get so excited, but you guys get to see them in the thumbnail beforehand anyway, so you will have already seen this piece. But, oh my gloriousness. It's for me. <gasps> Tommy! Oh my god, oh, that was just that you was this, your second attempt because the first one you broke the rim. Yes, so oh, this, yes, um, work in progress, oh, love it. I was going to do blue and green glaze, so of course I ended up with blue and purple and black <laughs> because this is meant to be like my take on the Nautilus shell. People use slip and do this for the Nautilus shell, but I actually carved it. Uh, which Trace had sent me a link somebody did and I did um, like cut the obviously cut the holes out in the rim. Wow. Oh, that's so gorgeous. So it's my thumbnail. It's my piece of the kiln. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. The claps. Mm. Um, so I already know the piece of the kiln so we can go at the end, at the, the end at the beginning. This is my piece of the kiln. Uh, I just love it. Don't know how I'm going to sell it. 
So um, it, the only thing I'm tossing up whether I'm going to refire it because I don't know if you can see in camera, but in the holes, I didn't quite get the obsidian inside all of the holes. So some of them, it's a bit hard to show you on an angle, but oh. some of them have white yeah. inside them. So the only problem is I've refired the uh, Northern Lights, which is almost is, it doesn't have seaweed because uh, seaweed, ugh. Sorry, but I can't stand seaweed. Uh, so, um, so I didn't put seaweed on it. So, but I've refired that before, and then the the colour gets absorbed even more by the obsidian. Remember, I had that big vase that I refired about five times. So, if I do, I'm going to put a bit more colour, one more layer of colour, just to safeguard against that. The only other option is to get a sharpie texture or get some black paint or something but it needs it so i didn't get in well enough you can do um i was going to say acrylic but that's not the right the right word but there is pottery paint that you can get that uh, people use yeah. after yes yeah, so that that people an tell me that yeah how good she's giving us tips <laughs> so good so good oh my god i love this so much anyway glorious so i took it out in the sun have already done my short in the sun so i'm putting that straight up after this goes up and you'll see that as well it's beautiful in the sun too next piece is oh i'm going to give you a little preview remember this disaster that um i actually don't mind now it's growing yeah. on me as often <laughs> happens so this is uh lagoon with tahiti great my favorite jungle gem and remember I did it, I was disappointed. The one I did at Cone 6, I cried, I loved it so much, have kept it, still have it. This was the one I did in the Jungle Gems Unload that I'm still buzzing about, three kilo loads ago, still buzzing, where I did it at Bisque, so they didn't run. They just stayed as um, brown blobs, and they are quite gold in the sun. So I brought this down to show you, because I wanted to redeem poor old Tahiti Grey. So I did it at Cone 5. And oh my gosh, this is too fun. It's it's amazing how so different that is. Yeah. This one as well. The, well, I've done this before, and at Cone Five, there are still little 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 dabs of the gold, but there's none at all in this one. I love that cut out as well. That carving is beautiful. <sighs> So this is actually over aqua, whereas that one was on lagoon. That's the only difference. Um, cone 04 bisque and cone five, five and a half. I didn't put cone packs in this time. You're welcome, mum. She doesn't like the cone packs. She says they're boring, but she's not a potter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, lagoon. the only difference, lagoon as the base and aqua, but that's only at the bottom. I don't put it under the jungle gem, so it won't affect the big jungle gem itself. But look at the beautiful, I don't want to walk around in case, I hope you can see that, the beautiful way that it runs at yep. cone five. And yeah, inside the yeah, runs down between yeah. the flower. Oh, gorgeous. So that is, again, the second attempt, because remember I showed you guys in the last unload how the other one I did of this had cracked and fallen as well, so I couldn't fix it. Um, so that is the, um, the carving that I saw from the lady in Jamaica. Again, I've lost her name. I'm so sorry. I always forget names. I'm terrible with names. But anyway, she, she does these beautiful carvings. But I, I love how you attempt something once and you go, oh, that was a fail. And you go, oh, well, I'll just do it again. The second time you do it, it was perfect. I know it was perfect, but, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> but I didn't get any cracks at all that I didn't even have to fix any cracks because I kept a little bit further away from the rim and I think maybe I did it a bit thicker, the, the walls as well. But yes, I have told you before, I'm nothing if not stubborn. I will keep at <laughs> something if I want something. I will keep trying. Uh, so that is that part done. Now I've got to get, oh, this one. This is one Chase got me to throw. So... <laughs> I watched Matthew Kelly Pottery. He did two recent lives. One was doing those um, mugs where you go up and you facet it and then you push down and it spirals. But he also did this vase. So it was pretty similar, yeah, actually. I really so, like that. It looks yeah, so good. You liked it when I did it too. I don't I know. Did, yeah. So what he did, he pulled the cylinder, like the same as what I do with my ripple mugs, and he put his fingers in and went like that, which is what I did as well. But this top part kind of slumped down into it, and it's 
I lifted it a tiny bit, but that's pretty much how it was. But I like it. I kind of left it because I liked it. But this is the one I'm talking about, Amanda at Red F Designs, where I went nuts with the glaze. I was like, no, nah, I'm going to take it from Amanda. I'm going crazy. So <laughs> what did I do? I think I got the base wrong. So I had seen this somewhere and written it down. So I did uh, two times, no, one times iron yellow, two times iron luster. So I think I should have swapped them because it's, as you know, I don't like browns. It's quite brown bottom. Mm. I think if I did the iron luster first, then the iron yellow on top. But that is what I had written down. So I, I followed it um, and I think I should have done it the other way. And then over the top, I could even called it wonky vase. <laughs> <laughs> so iron yellow and iron luster, so they're all over. Then I did I did just swoops, as you can see, wherever they landed, of uh, uh, sapphire float, chum plum, smoky mallow and lustrous jade. So again, most people would use seaweed. Don't like seaweed. I've now started putting in either textured turquoise or lustrous jade in its place, and I'm much happier. And then I did two, so I did three times of the colour in its blotches. And then I did two times light flux, pretty much actually quite far down for what people normally do because I knew horizontal texture, it's not going to run. So I brought it right down sort of even to half of that one, I think, just so I could get some movement and inside the rim because... I've done that before where I haven't put the light flux in the rim and it's really dark or we've had honey flux and I haven't done them and then it's really dark and it looks wrong. So I have put it in the rim as well. Yeah, that's pretty. I like it. I really yeah. love it. Really love it. And I love pieces like that because every time you look at it, you see something different. Yeah. And you pick your favourite spot and put it against the wall and you don't have to look at the other side yeah, or, you <laughs> or rotate bored, it. Or you get bored and go, well, I have a dipped completely from bars and I'll turn around. Yeah. But even the rim was the same as what Matthew Kelly did. And I like them on vases yeah. because it kind of holds the flowers out when you have the arrangement in there. It sprays your flowers out. So, mm. yeah, I, I actually really like it. It's growing on me. But I can't believe it didn't run everywhere. <laughs> All that glaze and it didn't. So, yay. So, that was awesome. So, what else? Now we're getting down to the little pieces. Oh, this one. Oh, love this colour. Oh, it's alright. There's a blanket there. She's trying not to look at the blankets. Um, so I love this colour. Oh, no, indigo. Blue. Yeah, your favourite blue. That's why she hates when I ask her. But I thought she'd get it because it's her favourite of the blue glazes. Yeah. When you get it right. Yeah. Now this is where I'm starting to get better with glazing. Four coats of indigo float, people, or three thick. This would have been. If you do anything less than three thick coats, you're going to get that green breaking, and that's what I hate. Or you get patches of green where you've gone thin. It needs to be thick, and that has fixed my problem. Oh, I love the shape and the carving on that. That's so cute. Well, that was another one that I didn't throw this one. The other one is in here, but I okay. threw a bigger version that Trace told me to do, which I'll tell you the story. So I threw a little baby to match, but I glazed them differently because I loved it too. Yeah. So pulled, faceted, then bowled it, but it didn't swell much because it's got a very wide base. If it was a thinner base and bowled more, you would have got more swirl on the faceting, but I love it like that. Mm. So guess what's over the top? You never, ever guess, and I will put that on you. Sandstone, which we normally don't like, but it's only one coat. And again, this was something that I had seen online somewhere and loved it. So uh, three to four indigo float, just one sandstone because I don't like brown, but I love that. You'd almost yeah. think it was winter wood or, or river birch, but it's sandstone. So, yeah, I love that. I think uh, Winterwood or River Birch might have got lost because sandstone is a darker brown. So let's get out. It's, it's, big, it's big mama. <gasps> Beachy glaze. <laughs> Beachy glaze. Oh, that's, that's so an easy one. So that one, uh, this is the one that Trace, when she was watching me, I said, I want to do a wider base. And then so I did, oh, I think she said to me, yeah, you did. I, she told me everything. I wasn't yeah. allowed. So she said wider base because she knows I struggle with that. And then I pulled the walls, and as I pulled the wall, she said, oh, facet it. So, because it was a thicker wall, you need thicker walls. But she said, I want wide faceting. So I got out my cheese grater, cheese wire thing, faceted it, 
bowled it and again it hasn't swelled much because the warts are so low if it was thinner and up more and you bowl it more it's better but I mean not better different I love it so I stopped about here the faceting so that it doesn't distort the rim and obviously you can see I stopped here which I love I love yeah, that look at the bottom um, and then that's where you can see so that is with the trimming the round trimming tool um, that Matthew Kelly uses on the mask. You've got and that's different, the but wire. you've also got different feet because you took that the yes. little one all the way to the yes, bottom. Yes, I did. That's right. So you don't get that little scallop. Yeah. I love that little scallop edge. That's I like both. I, I do, do. I like, I like both. both. But yes. yeah, I like. I actually couldn't even tell you which one I prefer. I yeah. like both. But both of them, I left the rim. I don't like it. If you watch Matthew Kelly's, he takes it the whole way to the rim. It yeah, distorts no. the rim. The rim then tears when he bowls. He's, he showed, like, when he was live throwing, a couple of them tore because he went right to the rim. Um, yes, yeah, so that was the round, the little round wire, the round trimming tool I faceted with. And that was the cheese cutter wire. Or you can use just your normal wire for bigger facets because Trey said I want big facets <laughs> so that was her one and that was my one so that's our versions so this had a completely different because in my camera on photos I edit and I put text of what guys I want to do on it. totally different what I had written down I couldn't even tell you now what it was got it out of this looked at it and I just went no nah, it has to be beachy I just just looked I don't know it just looked like yeah. it so I'm really glad I did that so yeah it's gorgeous do I need to even tell everybody again? Yeah. You, well, you know. No, because you've got new people. Watching. I was about to say, no, but I was just about to say, <laughs> I would have different people watching all the time and not necessarily watching all pieces, but usually I should just make you go back and watch homework previous, yes. but I won't do that to you. Uh, so it is three oatmeal on the bottom, which I love oatmeal by itself. We've discovered it's like sand. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, three celadon bloom at the top and two light flux in the middle. So I've done one light flux in the past and it vanishes. You need the two and the same inside. But I've got these, I've got a lot of brown blobbies inside. I'm not sure where they've come from, which is weird mm -hmm. because unless some of the sandstone crystals flicked over into it, I don't know, because I do glaze them all next to each other. Mm -hmm. But that's beautiful. So I actually can really picture that in the middle of a table as a soup serving mm -hmm. bowl with a ladle in it. It's probably a bit small but if you had two to three people then you know or even just for an, an elderly one well, have to be elderly yeah. but two people but it makes me think of your cobbler suits yeah. like if you had Did... like cobbler with your suit inside it yeah that you could do like an or the spinach dip or thing spinach, yeah. yeah anyway i love that beachy yeah, guys gorgeous. i'm obsessed all right, so this one, I'll do this one first because I like it less. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, this one is, um, I saw this again on Julia, Ceramics by Julia. Hi, Julia. Love you, girl. <laughs> and uh, she uses amaryllis a fair bit. So she had done marigold with amaryllis over. Yours was beautiful. Don't know what happened to mine. I do know what happened to mine. I shouldn't say that because so Julia had done, I think as well, if I had done the marigold mixing clear that I prefer, yeah. the lighter daffodil kind of yellow. And um, Julia's didn't look that dark, so I'm not sure. But that is three coats. But she only did one of Amaryllis. And when I was looking at it on her video, on her unload, it looked a bit faint bit pale to me so I went the two but I think I should have done in real life I think I should have done the one so maybe mm. in real life Julia's was more vibrant in real life than what it was on. I mean it was as I say it was gorgeous that's why I copied it but but I love the inside of that I just don't like the combination on the outside I so I love the amaryllis on its own and maybe she did take the amaryllis right over maybe that's the difference because it hasn't really moved, so I can mm. probably chuck it back in. But you know, when you refire, it runs more, so it's probably a bit of a risk to do that. But you know what? People love yellow. People are always coming to me at markets. Have you got yellow and have you got red? Well, the two colours, no. But... Bright, happy colour. Mind you, I don't consider red to be a bright, happy colour. No. Well, it's the colour of love, I guess. <laughs> so this is gorgeous. Oh, so, I so love cute. this. So this is also. Ceramics by Julia, I'm 99% sure. I'm not 100%, pretty sure. So that is um, 
honey flux times two on the bottom because it's the base of uh, river birch and I don't like all the brown in the bottom. And then I just did one river birch over in the bottom. And then I did three river birch all over the rest of it. And then what's that on the top of it? Poppy field? The reason yeah. I'm asking you is because it's amaryllis. <coughs> I was going to say, I can't quite see from here. Isn't it? It is a bit fit. But look how different it is on what you put it on. Only, is it only one coat, though? Uh, it was two, one or two. No, I think it was two as well. Wow. But I think because you've got the yellow, well, there's a lot more crystals in that too. But maybe it was only one. Maybe that was the difference. I don't know. Oh, but it's, That's gorgeous. Maybe it was because it's so subtle. It's beautiful. Yeah, I love that. But I keep looking at it and thinking, oh, I crawled in the bottom, which Trace won't be able to see. But it's not. I stamped hearts and butterflies in the base. But it looks like the glaze has crawled. And then I go, oh, no, I have to remind myself. And I also stamped around the rim. So the amaryllis crystals do cover it up a bit. And it, I don't know that I like it in the base because I keep looking at it thinking the glaze has crawled, but it hasn't. So that's good that it hasn't. Uh, nearly there because I think this is oh this is the last one this is the disaster oh I love this plate oh, you should be the yeah it did your plate thing but it didn't fix itself oh. so uh, what I did I've been saying you know if you click on one thing on Facebook you get five billion come up so I clicked on one painting video ad thing and I get a billion of them. And what they do is they splop the colours in paint, obviously, get wet brush and just go like this. So I did that with underglazes with a lot of water, just sort of smooshed them all together, which I love. And then I did a tiny bit of yellow over the top and I was trying to get it to look like a sunset over the water. Well, the yellow's burnt out over the water anyway. And obviously just butterfly transfers on top and then clear. But when it came out of Bisque, it had crawled a little, not crawled, sorry, crackled like yours did, the underglaze. Yeah, black, yeah. After Bisque had Damn. had crackled and, and I thought, oh, Trace, or the other one I've done before as well, remelted in, it should be fine. I kind of rubbed it a little bit, but it's worse. So I don't know, and I have been thinking ever since I saw it this morning, that I will ask my brains trust, my mud magic family, because it's now got clear over it, I'm assuming I can't do anything about it apart from maybe grinding it back, putting under glaze, starting again. But I don't know if that would even be successful because it's flat and it's a great size. It's beautiful. I think that's the best size plate I've done. That's a true you're, dinner you're plate welcome. size. That was, the, that was the other one I said, yep, do a plate. It was <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah. So, she, yeah. so I did that when she was watching as well. But... I'm really disappointed because yeah. other plates I've done, they end up shrinking they're, heaps and they're too small, but that's a perfect But instead of size. trying to repeat that to fix that actual pattern, you could always just put a celadon over the top so you'd still get your... Yeah, you might still see do. that cracking there though. I could just put something totally like beachy glaze over it or something to start yeah, fresh just, again. Yeah. Put something totally different over it. Fire. Yeah, good yeah. idea because I love the shape and everything. And I but I like the, the idea of the sunset and I think that you've got the merging yeah. of colours really well because you yeah. don't have those lines in between. I think that's the best yeah one like that you've done yeah yeah and that's from watching those painting and having a lot of water i yeah. use a lot more water than i and, ever realized you and each to. and and each color still wet so when you mm. you're doing it it is easier to merge you're not waiting for one color to dry yeah before you're doing the next yeah and that's why you do you blob all four at once yeah. and then just do it all at once yeah. and then just touch up any that you need to put a bit more whatever um, and you can actually do another layer when it is dry and then do it again. Um, but yes, I, I, yeah, I think I will take your advice on that. I will put that back through with something darker and try and cover the whole thing. But we all know about refiring, but it's better than ditching it because I just yeah. love it. But Trace announced to me when I got here, we are actually seriously having lobster for dinner. <laughs> so I might have lobster on it. I don't care because I can wash it and refire it still. 
Um, so that's very exciting. It's like my favourite. And I don't know about in America, but lobster's like so expensive here. So it's like a real treat. So yeah, I'm very excited. Because at the moment I can't cook, so it's whatever I can buy and I'll eat. She made a comment, well, I think it was yesterday or the day before, as a joke that she'd get one of my boys to cook lobster. And I went, I know where I can get some lobster more well cooked, ready and delivered. So that's funny. Yeah, so yeah, it's getting delivered and everything. So I don't have to cook either. So I didn't even mean to do a subliminal message, but my subliminal <laughs> message has landed me lobster morning for dinner. So yay. Uh, so that is it. Um, so, I mean, I've already told you my kiln favourite at the start. Oh, kiln yeah, favourite. Easy. Oh, far out. That's beautiful. I'll put the short up oh, right now as well. I'd be tossing up with the, the other carved bowl as well. Yeah, those, I do. Those two are my two favourites. Yeah. I think because I've seen it before, I'm not as excited by it, but I do love it. But I think this as well. Oh, I didn't say about this. I think this as well because I haven't done that before, that combo I kind of have, but because I did the obsidian to the rim for the circles, which I wanted, like the night sky, like stars or comets or something, planets, mm. and a, a t intention, I'm kind of proud of the glazing of that. But what I did mean to say, and again, Ceramics by Julia. This is the Ceramics by Julia show today. She has taught me from watching her unloads that I have always done all my colour, one colour, and then all my colour on top. But what she does is she does smoky mellow, for example, this one, smoky mellow, sapphire foot, smoky mellow, sapphire foot, blah, blah. So that's what I did. So in the middle bit, I started with one colour and the other colour here, and then I alternated each layer. So, and I'm getting much more um, mottling, which I love in the glaze, much, so much cool. prettier. Whereas before, you would have still seen a bit of the purple come through, but it wouldn't have been as nice as that. So thank you, Julia. <laughs> so, all right. So that is it. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Again. Stay muddy and have a magic day. Bye.